Hello and welcome again to this particular session. In the last one, we started off with questions on list price and catalog price and 3.2 we were discussing and I asked you to give it a try. Some of you might have, but some of you might haven't. So in case if you haven't, just pay attention. In this question, actually, first of all, what is given to us? In this question, it is written that there is an enterprise which invoices goods to branch at City Magnum and goods are invoiced at 20% less than the list price, which is cost plus 50%. And with instruction to sell the goods to customers on cash at invoice price and on credit at list price. Besides, there is another line and also to allow discount for prompt payment. What does all these things mean? First of all, it is given that your goods are sent at 20% less than the list price, which is cost plus 50%. So if you presume your cost to be 100, because it is given list price is cost plus 50%, you add 50%, you will get list price 150. And goods are sent at 20% less than the list price. So 20% of 150 is 30. So your invoice price is 120. Similar to 3.1, now we have three rates. One is cost price 100. Invoice price 120 and list price is 150. First, we take the difference between the cost price and invoice price that is 20 by 120 or 1 by 6. In the denominator, there is invoice price. So, so this is your rate of margin on invoice price. If you will apply this rate on an item which is at invoice price, that item will fall back to cost price. Now we take difference between invoice price and list price. The difference is 30. Below, I have written list price so this is rate of profit on list price 1 by 5 if i apply this rate on an item which is at list price that item will fall back to invoice price so in order to convert list price to invoice price i may have to use this particular rate then there is another scenario we can take the difference between the cost price and list price the difference between cost price and list price is 50 as you can see correct 50 is the difference so 50 by 150 or 1 by 3 is your rate because in the denominator we have list price, if I'm going to apply this item on an item which is at list price, that item will fall back to cost price. This is the point which you need to understand. Now in this question, there is direction that cash sales should be done by branch at invoice price and credit sales should be done by branch at list price. Besides, we have here that prompt payments. Prompt payment, what, what is the meaning of prompt payment? Prompt means quickly. Sometimes daters pay before the majority date. Suppose today I sell you the goods on credit and ask you to pay me after six months. But it could be a possibility that you might pay me before the majority date of six months. Let us say within next two months you pay, pay the amount back to me. So in case from my perspective, it would be termed that you are prompt paying data. Prompt paying data means you paid the amount before the majority date. So we have a policy that in case if the daters would pay promptly, we will give them some discount. That is the only thing. Now we come back to the question. A stock in the beginning is given. Nothing is written whether it is at invoice price or whether it is at uh, what we call uh, cost price or list price. So we shall always presume it at invoice price. So I will write here opening stock. Opening stock is 4,50,000. So I will write here 4,50,000. Then I will move over to the branch adjustment account. I will write over there load on opening stock. Opening stock is 4,50,000. I want to convert invoice price to cost price. So I will have to use the rate 1 by 6 and loading will be equal to 75,000. Correct? Loading will be equal to 75,000. Next item is your daters. In the daters account, you will write opening balance brought down 360. And then you have here furniture 120,000. I told you even the last session that in case if you come across any property, plant and equipment or any fixed asset, furniture, computer, etc., you keep a track of that item separately. So furniture opening balance 120, I'm keeping the track separately. Then we have got here cash sales. So I'm going to write here cash sales 13,60,000. So cash sales here, I'm going to write 13 lakh 60,000. Besides, we have now credit sales. Credit sales, I will write here. 
amount of credit sales given to you is 32 lakh 10,000. First of all, we must actually take the credit sales to the debtor's account. In the debtor's account, I am going to write credit sales. Thirty-two lakh ten thousand. Now we must not forget that credit sales are at list price. Correct? Credit sales are at list price because branch has been instructed by the head office to incur the credit sales at list price. This item is at list price. So similar to the last question, actually, we will have to convert this item of list price into invoice price. So in order to convert this item, which is at list price to invoice price, I will write towards the debit side excess of list price over invoice price. So my target is to bring list price to invoice price. In order to bring list price to invoice price, correct? In order to bring list price to invoice price, I may have to use this rate. If I'm going to apply this rate on an item which is at list price, that will come back to invoice price. So one fifth is the rate which I may have to use here. 32 lakh 10,000. 32 lakh 10,000. Now 32 lakh 10,000 into 1 by 5, I will have to apply the rate. 1 by 5. If I'm going to apply this rate, it will be equal to 32 lakh 10,000 divided by 5, 6 lakh 42,000 it will be equal to, sorry, let me check it again, 32 lakh 10,000, right, credit sales, divided by 5, yes, it is equal to 6 lakh 42,000. So, this is your excess. You have brought this item to the invoice price, no doubt about that. But point is that you incurred a sales of 32 lakh 10,000, but you are reducing your sales now. Now this is considered as a little bit in justification. So that is why it is again taken to the credit side of branch adjustment account. After all, it is a gain to us. Excess of list price over invoice price. That is 6 lakh 42,000. 6,42,000. Is it clear to you or not? Next item is goods invoiced to branch. Sorry, credit sales are 21,50,000. Oh my God. This sort of mistake is unpardonable. Credit sales are 21,50,000. Extremely sorry, actually. 21,50,000 is your credit sales. Anyway, 21,50,000 into 1 by 5. That is equal to 4,30,000. You will take 4,30,000 here now. Now the next item is actually goods invoiced. So goods invoiced, we will write here goods sent to branch 32 lakh 10,000. 32 lakh 10,000. 32 lakh 10,000. Now we will take the loading of this item also. Goods sent to branch 32 lakh 10,000 into 1 by 6 because we have to convert it to cost price it is at invoice price that will be equal to 5,35,000 I think so let me check also 32,10,000 divided by 5 oh, sorry divided by 6 32,10,000 divided by 6 is 5,35 then we have goods return so we will go to the Credit side of branch stock account shall write goods sent to branch. Returns amount will be 84,000. Again, we will take the loading. We will write towards the debit side load on goods sent to branch account. Returns 84,000 into 1 by 6. Because it is at invoice price, we have to bring it to the cost price. 
84,000 divided by 6 is equal to 14,000. Then we have been given expenses in the form of rent and salaries. Total expenses are 3,5,000. In the branch profit and loss account, I simply write expenses. Three lakh five thousand. Three lakh five thousand. Then we have here the stock at the end is five lakh ten thousand. I will write here closing stock five lakh ten thousand. Five lakh ten thousand. Now we will take the loading of closing stock. Load on closing stock. 5,10,000 into 1 by 6. 5,10,000 into 1 by 6. That is 85,000. 85,000 is your loading on closing stock. Correct? 85,000. After this, we have here stock at the end. Then we have petty expenses paid by branch. Now, branch has paid. How much has been spent or paid? That is what is written under this system. So, I will write here petty expenses 11,000. So, petty expenses are 11,000. Then after that, in this particular question, we have, actually this line is wrongly printed. Please cut this line. Correct? It is unnecessarily printed here. Remittances by branch is 32,10,000. Now, in this question, remittances is given to you. In this question, remittances is given to you as 32 lakh. Remittances by branch to head office. By branch to head office given to you as 32 lakh. We know that remittances basically comprises of cash sales, and cash receipt from debtors. An amount of your cash sales is given in the question 13,60,000. So, out of remittances of 32 lakh, if cash sales is equal to 13,60,000, then obviously your cash from debtors must be equal to 18,40,000. Cash from debtors must be equal to 18,40,000. Is it clear to you? So this is how you have been able to extract the figure of cash receipt from daters. And cash receipt from daters, ultimately you are going to take it to the credit side of daters account. Cash from daters. 18,40,000. Correct? Now, after this item you have here discount and bad debts discount and bad debts of course ultimately you will have to return in pnl also so discount is 185000 and bad debts are also there 15800 we will have to write these item in the debtors account also so, in the data's account, I will write discount 1,85,000. Then bad debts also. Bad debts. Amount of bad debts is 15,800. 15,800. Now, we are left up with only one item. As far as tabular information is concerned, goods returned by branch data. Now, this time goods have been returned by branch data. So, it will be presumed that these goods have been returned by branch data to branch. So, it is known as sales return. And amount of sales return is actually 12,600. You will write here 12,600. Sales return, as you know, is always written against the credit sales. Sales return 12,600. Correct. After this, given below, 
that it was decided to make a provision for discount of rupees 42500 it was decided to make a provision for discount of rupees 42500 see whenever in accounts provision is made it is made in expectation of some losses these losses or expenses haven't taken place but in expectation that it they might take place in the next year we so in anticipation of some losses generally the provisions are made because of conservatism principle of account conservatism says that provide for all the expenses and losses correct but we never take into account any expected income but all the expected losses are considered so our entities might be thinking that whatever closing data would be there at the end of the current year some of those data might would might pay in future before the maturity date because they will pay to us before the scheduled date before the stipulated date before the maturity date so we may have to actually give them some discount and if we will give them some discount it will be a loss to us so that is why a provision need to be made so in accounts whenever provision is made entries profit and loss account debit to provision account so this will not affect the daters but it will affect the profit and loss account i will write here provision for discount provision for discount of course this provision for discount is being made for prompt paying daters correct entity might be feeling that some of the daters at the end of the year may pay us actually in advance or earlier than their what we call a stipulated date of payment so in expectation of that we are making a provision and you have been given provision to the extent of 42500 it will not be written in the data's account. Remember one thing, provision for discount because entry is profit and loss account debit to provision for discount account. And then we are being given that depreciate furniture at the rate of 10%. So we have to depreciate the furniture. See, opening balance of furniture is 1,20,000. So depreciation 10% will be equal to 12,000. So closing balance of furniture will be equal to 1,8,000. We are not concerned with that. We are concerned with the depreciation, correct? So we will take the depreciation amount now and we will write the depreciation in the profit and loss account. So in the profit and loss account, I will write depreciation on furniture. That is equal to 12,000 this is how you have to do this particular question now you will tell you this question if i will tell you i will get a surplus i think in this question there is surplus very marginal success marginals amount 13 lakh 60 plus 21 50 plus 84 plus 510 minus 450 minus 3210 minus 430 minus 12 and 600 so 1400 is surplus correct so 1400 is your surplus you will write the surplus amount here 1400 Then you will take the surplus 1400. Now, 1400 plus 4 lakh 30,000 plus 5 lakh 35,000 plus 75,000 minus 14,000 minus 85,000, 9 lakh 42,400. is your gross profit 942400 will be your gross profit obviously you are going to write gross profit over here 942400 and from the gross profit you are going to subtract all these items 305000 minus 11000 minus 185000 minus 15800 minus 42,500 minus 12,000. So 371,100 
will be your net profit. Your net profit is this much. And finally, you will tally your debtor's account and you will get the closing balance. And closing balance, as far as debtor's account is concerned, 456600 I think. 4,56,600, correct? So, this was your question 3.2. After 3.2, there is another very interesting question. If you have written this and noted down, have you noted down this one? Because I will need a bit of space to do this one. Okay, presuming that So first of all, let's go through this particular question and then, okay, just give me a minute or so. And then, I will need this much of a space at least. Okay, now it is enough. 3.3 When goods are sold at invoice price and list price, G force with head office in City X invoices goods to the branch at 20% less than the catalog price. Catalog price means list price, which is cost plus 50%. Rates will be similar to the one which we just computed a minute ago. 3.3 Correct 3.3. First of all, you imagine your cost price as 100 and it is given that list price is cost plus 50%. You add 50% to it and you will get your list price of 150. Correct? Your list price is 150. And it is clearly mentioned in the question that goods are sent at 20% less than the catalog price. Catalog price means the list price. So compute 20% of 150, that is 30. So that means goods are sent at an invoice price of 120. This is the first thing. Then, you frame the rates, cost price, invoice price, and your list price. You know the rate on cost, sorry, cost price is 100, and invoice price is 120, and list price is 150. Correct? If I take the difference between the cost price and the invoice price, the difference is equal to 20. 20 by 120 or 1 by 6 because in the denominator we have invoice price I can apply this rate to an item which is at invoice price if I am going to apply this rate to an item which is at invoice price that item will come back to cost price similarly we can take another what we call rate difference between invoice price and list price is 30 so 30 by 150 
or 1 by 5. Below is list price. If we are going to apply this item, which is at list price, that will come back to invoice price. Of course, in this question, you have another rate that is difference between cost price and list price. If you take the difference between cost price and list price, that will be equal to 50 by 150 or 1 by 3. If you are going to apply this rate on an item which is at list price, that will come back to cost price. Another important scenario in this particular question is, suppose if an item is at cost price, suppose if an item is at cost price, it may happen. Then you will have to convert that item to either invoice price or to list price or some other price. Suppose there is an item at cost price and the difference between cost price and invoice price is 20. If I divide 20 by 100, that is cost price, correct? 1 by 5. This rate I will use to convert cost price into invoice price. If I will apply this rate, I will have to add that margin and the cost price will become your invoice price. Is it clear to you or not? So, sometime in this particular question, you may have to use this rate also. So, further it is given that with instruction that cash sales are to be at invoice price and credit sales are at catalog price, that is your list price. Now, the first thing which I just wanted to make you understand is that stock in the beginning at branch at cost is 12,000. Suppose if I prepare branch stock account, although in this particular question, branch stock account is not needed. Question is asking something else, but still branch stock account. Suppose if I prepare branch stock account, correct? In the branch stock account, I will write opening stock. Now opening stock is given at cost. The point I was trying to make you understand here. Opening stock at cost is given to you. Opening stock at cost, as you can see, is actually 12,000. So you will have to bring it to what we call invoice price because this account is prepared at invoice price. In order to bring the cost to invoice price, I will have to use the rate 1 by 5. And if I am going to use 1 by 5, that will be equal to 12,000 divided by 5, 2,400, correct? Opening balance, the stock is this much, so 2,400. So that means, opening stock, actually here is some, it is not uh, at in a cost price. I'm extremely sorry. Sorry, extremely sorry. Because, because here it is also writ written stock in the beginning at branch at its cost. If you remember, I told you if something is at branch at cost, it means at invoice price. Actually, it is at invoice price given to you. I'm extremely sorry, extremely sorry. So opening stock. At, because it is written at branch at its cost. So it means it is at invoice price itself. It is at invoice price itself. And later on when I am going to prepare branch. Adjustment account. In the branch adjustment account. I will have to write load. On. Opening stock 12,000 into because it is invoice price and rate of profit on invoice price to convert into to convert invoice price to cost price is 1 by 6. So I will have to apply the rate 1 by 6. Your rate will be equal to 2000. Correct? Rate will be equal to 2000. Then here it is given to you goods sent to branch at cost to head office this item is at cost because it is written at cost to head office so goods sent to branch account at cost is 140000 first i will have to convert it to invoice price in order to convert it into invoice price this time i will have to apply the rate 1 by 5 
वन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाई फाइव इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड आई विल राइट ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड एंड देन वन लैख सिक्सटी एट विल बी द इन वॉइस प्राइस करेक्ट वन लैख सिक्सटी एट थाउजेंड विल बी इन वॉइस प्राइस and then i will write load on goods sent to branch account actually i can write the loading 28 straight away but if i want to show goods sent to branch invoice price 168 1 by 6 now i will apply so 28000 will be the loading is it clear to you next item goods received by the branch till the close of the year is 138000 Actually, head office has sent one lakh sixty-eight thousand worth of goods. Correct, one lakh sixty-eight thousand worth of goods at invoice price. And question says that goods received by the branch is actually one lakh thirty-eight thousand. So that means difference of these two thirty thousand is your goods in transit. So I will write here goods in transit towards the opposite side. Buy goods in transit. How I will arrive at goods in transit? One lakh sixty-eight thousand total worth of goods sent and goods received is one lakh thirty-eight thousand. So that means thirty thousand worth of goods are still in transit. Thirty thousand worth of goods. So thirty thousand worth of goods are in transit. You will take the loading of those goods also load. On goods in transit, thirty thousand into one by six. That is equal to five thousand. Then we have here cash sales forty six and credit sales one lakh. Cash sales is forty six thousand. You will write here cash sales. Forty-six thousand. Your credit sales is equal to one lakh. Now, when you will take the credit sale to, you will take the credit sale to debtor's account. But I am not preparing debtor's account in this question. However, credit sales are done at list price, as you know. So. I will have to bring it to invoice price for the same. I will have to write here excess of list price over invoice price. One lakh is the credit sale. It is at list price. In order to bring it to what we call invoice price, which rate I would need? This is your invoice price. This is your list price. Thirty by one fifty one by five. If you are going to apply this rate, then list price will come back to invoice price. So one by five is the rate which you need to apply. One by five, twenty thousand. Also, excess is written towards the credit side. Excess of list price over invoice price that is equal to twenty thousand. Correct. This is how you are going to do this one. Then we have got here. We have got here. Next item: stock lost by fire. Now, any stock lost by fire is considered as abnormal loss. So, stock lost two thousand five hundred. It is a sort of abnormal loss. So, I will take the loading of this item. The stock lost two thousand five hundred into one by six. Two thousand five hundred into one by six is equal to four one seven. Correct. We will take the loading also. So four one seven will be your loading. And a stock at a stock lost at cost will find place in the branch PNL. But in this question, we neither we 
we are required to prepare branch adjustment account honestly nor we are required to prepare branch pnl because question is simply asking us what is the amount of closing stock so now we are in a position to compute the closing stock now first of all let me check here very interesting point stock lost by fire at cost is given at cost is given oh my god stock lost at cost is given so here you will have to first convert it to invoice price just wait this is at cost in order to convert it into invoice price because this entire account is prepared at invoice price so one by five i will apply three thousand and then i will take the loading the loading will be equal to because now stock lost is at invoice price and your loading amount will be 500 extremely sorry once again this is the second mistake in this question correct anyway so main point is that you need to understand the concept and now you can find out your answer answer is closing stock now how much is closing stock you will have to compute and according to your solution, it is 51,000. However, you can find your gross profit also, but in this question, it is not needed. Correct? So, this is very interesting question. But after this one, the question which we are going to take is another question which is very, very interesting question. <laughs> this question again is very interesting question. Three point four. Dolphin Computers Limited with head office in Delhi invoices goods to branch at Rudrapur at twenty percent less than the list price, which is cost plus fifty percent. List price is cost plus fifty percent with instructions to sell the goods on cash at invoice price and credit at catalog price. Till up to this point, nothing is new for us, isn't it or not? Nothing is new for us, no doubt about that. However, question further states that if 15% discount is to be given to the customer, who will pay promptly? I just explained a while ago to you the meaning of prompt paying daters. So this time, it is very clearly given that if any daters will pay before the what we call maturity date, before the due date, we will give him a discount of 15%, correct? So, as usual, first of all, we start. This is step number one. Question is 3.4. And under this question, first of all, what we are supposed to do, presuming cost price as your 100, list price is cost plus 50%. You will have to reflect this in the examination. Then your list price is equal to 150. Now goods are being sent at 20% less than the list price. So invoice price will be equal to 120. Invoice price is equal to 120. This is the first then you frame the rates, cost price, invoice price, and of course your list price. Cost price is your 100, invoice price is 120, list price is 150. So many times I have told you now, first take the difference between cost price and invoice price, that is 20, 20 by 120, or 1 by 6. When you will apply this rate, your invoice price will come back to your cost price. Similarly, you take the difference between invoice price and list price, that will be equal to 30, correct? That will be equal to 30 and you divide it by 150 list price. Ultimately, it will be equal to 1 by 5. 
if you will apply this rate on an item which is at list price will fall back to invoice price these are the two vital rates besides that besides that another rate can be framed difference between cost price and list price is actually 50 50 by 150 or 1 by 3 if we will apply this rate to an item which is at list price that item will come back to cost price these are the three vital rates further in this particular question it is given that <coughs> cash sales instructions have been given your cash sales should be at invoice price so no problem with respect to cash sales because cash sales should be done at invoice price as per the question however credit sales need to be done at list price at list price Besides in this particular question, there is from discount to from paying daters. Discount at the rate of 15% to prompt paying daters. Prompt paying daters. Prompt paying daters. It's a pretty long term, so I will use PPD from paying daters. Those daters who will pay before the what we call maturity date, such daters will be given some what we call discount in this particular question. Now, first, as usual, I am going to prepare the ledger accounts, correct? Books of head office. In the books of head office, we will prepare branch stock account. Besides, we will, besides that, we will prepare branch adjustment account. Branch adjustment account. And then branch PNL account. And then finally branch daters account. Branch daters account. Correct. Interesting question. Not tough, but interesting question. First item is stock in the beginning. Now let me know whether this stock is at invoice price or at cost price or at some other price. Sir, invoice price, good. If it is at invoice price, correct? Then you are going to write here opening stock. How much is the opening stock? Opening stock actually is 24,000. So you are going to write here 24,000. Opening stock 24,000. Obviously you are going to take the loading of this item also. You will write here load on opening stock 24,000 into 1 by 6, 20 by 120. So 6,000 will be your loading. Next item as you can see is actually daters in the beginning 20,000. So in the daters account, we simply write balance brought down 20,000. 20,000 in the daters account. What else is given to us? Goods received from head office 264,000. Goods received. Actually, here in the branch stock account, I will have to write goods sent to branch account. However, we have been given received. Received amount is 2,64,000 given to you. However, in this question, there is no goods in transit. If there would have been, I would have had added it. 
टू लैख सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड सो टू लैख सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड इज योर गुड सेंट टू ब्रांच अकाउंट इज इट क्लियर टू यू नाउ यू विल टेक द लोडिंग ऑफ दिस आइटम ऑल्सो लोडिंग ऑन गुड सेंट टू ब्रांच अकाउंट टू लैख सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड इंटू वन बाई सिक्स टू लैख सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड इंटू वन बाई सिक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड आई थिंक सो यस इट इज फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड सो फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड इज द अमाउंट विच यू आर गोइंग टू राइट ओवर हिट फोर्टी फोर थाउजेंड नाउ यू हैव बीन गिवन कैश सेल्स नाइंटी टू थाउजेंड एंड क्रेडिट सेल्स टू लैख कैश सेल्स नाइंटी टू थाउजेंड यू विल राइट हेयर कैश सेल्स नाइंटी टू थाउजेंड देन यू विल ऑब्वियसली राइट क्रेडिट सेल्स अमाउंट ऑफ क्रेडिट सेल्स गिवन टू यू इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन इज टू लैक कैश सेल्स इज एट इन वॉइस प्राइस सो नो प्रॉब्लम However, credit sales is at what we call list price, so there is a slight problem. So, because credit sales is given to us in this case, so what I will do now, on the opposite side, I will write here excess of list price over invoice price. That is two lakh into. now i want to convert list price to what we call cost price in order to convert your list price to invoice price you will need this rate 1 by 5 is it clear to you or not so you will write here 1 by 5 40000 because when we write towards the debit side our amount of credit sales gets reduced so that is why ultimately it is taken to the credit side excess of list price over invoice price that is equal to 40000 because ultimately it is a gain to you till even up to till this particular point there is no problem now we have cash receipt from dater 171270 cash receipt from daters is given to you now So cash receipt from daters, you will write here by cash one seven one two seven zero. Amount of cash received correct by daters. Then we have discount allowed to daters. Discount allowed to daters will play very significant role. First, we will write here discount. Twenty six thousand seven hundred and thirty. Twenty six thousand seven hundred and thirty, and we will write towards the debit side of P and L also discount. Twenty six thousand seven hundred and thirty. Twenty six thousand seven hundred and thirty. After this, we have got expenses. That is twelve thousand. So in the branch P and L account, I will write here expenses. Amount of expenses is equal to twelve thousand. Then we have got closing balance of debtors. Closing balance of debtors is twenty two thousand. So you will write in the debtors account balance carried down twenty two thousand. Balance carried down twenty two thousand. Also, we haven't yet, till up to this point, haven't written amount of credit sales in the debtors account. So I will write credit sales two lakhs. Correct. Now, last item we have got stock at the end. In the branch stock account, I will write closing stock. Now, closing stock given to you is thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. Now you will write here loading on closing stock. Loading on closing stock thirty thousand into one by six is equal to five thousand. 
now below it is written it was reported further it was reported further that a part of stock was stolen and which was not covered by insurance during the year first i stop here during the year some part of the stock has been stolen but we do not know how much is the amount so what i am going to do now first i am going to actually tell you branch stock account when i will tell you the branch stock account i will get a balancing figure of 6000 now this balancing figure this balancing figure of 6000 what should i treat it logically the first preference is given to closing stock and closing stock most of the time is available then we treat it as deficiency or a spoilage but in this question it is clearly given that some stock has been stolen so that is why you will write it as stock is stolen that mean it is a sort of abnormal loss so you will consider this balancing figure as stock is stolen it correct now stock is stolen is almost like abnormal loss so that is why you will take the loading of stock is stolen yeah. 6000 is the stock amount 16 1000 and in the branch pnl also i will write stock is stolen at cost stock is stolen at cost 5000 6000 minus 1000 i can also find my gross profit now if i am going to find my gross profit that will be equal to how much gross profit your gross profit will be equal to equal to 82000 no gross profit will be equal to how much 82000 yes it is Eighty-four ninety minus how much it is actually? Forty-four eighty-four ninety. Something is missing. Four forty-four forty eighty-two. Let me check it out once again. I am having a bit of problem. Forty-four plus forty ninety. Minus six thousand. Actually, this is four thousand, not six thousand. That that is why I was having a problem. Twenty-four thousand into one by six is actually four thousand. So eighty-two thousand. Now it is correct. Gross profit eighty-two thousand. Eighty-two thousand is your gross profit. Now, why I am doing this question? the reason being because till up to this particular point we haven't faced any problem now in this question these two lines are very very vital further a provision should be made for discount to be allowed to debtors as on the last day of the accounting year on the basis of trend of prompt payments what does this question states that whatever closing debtors which you are having whatever closing debtors you are having that is 22000 worth of debtors you are having you need to make a provision you need to make a provision for discount why you need to make a provision for discount against these debtors because some of these debtors may be prompt paying debtors some of these debtors will pay us obviously much before the what we call maturity date next year so we will have to give them discount at that time so in the current year we will have to make a provision however in the last question it was clearly given that we had to make a provision of 42500 but this time it is given that we have to make the provision for discount for prompt paying debtors on the basis of on the basis of trend of payments 
on the basis of trend of payments. Now, what does it mean? So on the basis of trend of payment, this is the main point in this question. Now, only thing left in this particular question is, I have to make a provision, but how much provision I will make? I am supposed to make a provision for discount, which I will put towards the debit side, provision for discount. But how much provision I will have to make? That is the only question left now in this. Correct? How much provision now I am supposed to make? Then once the provision will be known, then I can easily find out my net profit. Then I can easily find my net profit as I said. So, only thing left is to find out the provision in this particular question. And you also know that provision for discount will never ever come in the data's account. Your data's account is getting automatically tallied in this particular question. I hope you got the, what we call, theme of this particular question, what we are supposed to do. So once you have got this, once you have got this, now I will tell you how to compute the provision on the basis of past trends. See here. Could you tell me, first of all, it is a sort of working. Working note. In the working note, you are computing provision for discount. Provision for discount. How will you compute the provision for discount? That's the main point. How will you compute the provision for discount? That is the main point. Is it clear to you? In order to compute the provision for discount, what you are supposed to do in this particular question? See here. First of all, you let me know how much cash you have received from the daters. Cash received from daters is 1,71,270. Good. Now, could you tell me how much discount in the current year you gave to daters? Discount. Discount you gave is equal to 26,730. If I am going to add both these items, do you know what I will get? First of all, I am not asking you the amount. Amount will be 1,98,000. What does this 1,98,000 reflect? It reflects daters, daters who must have paid, whom? must have paid daters <coughs> who must have paid promptly. Are you getting my point or not? Because you received a cash of 1,71,270 and you must have given a discount of 26,730 so this figure shows that this, these are the daters who must have paid during the current year. Correct? Daters who must have paid during the current year. Actually, not promptly. Let me actually cut this one. Daters who must have paid. Daters who must have paid during the year. Why I am saying so, so, daters who must have paid during the year? Because some of the daters might have paid <coughs> at their scheduled time, but you must have given discount only to those daters who must have paid the amount before the maturity date. So, because you gave a discount of 26,730 and you received a cash of 1,71,270, so we may say that total 1,98,000 worth of daters must have paid or there were 1,98,000 worth of daters who were supposed to pay. At least you can say this way now. Correct? Now, I want to know if there are daters of 1,98,000 who were supposed to pay, how many among them actually, how many among them actually have paid us promptly? So out of these 1,98,000 daters, now I want to know the prompt paying daters. 
prompt paying data ppd prompt paying data how will i come to know about the prompt paying data we know that we are giving 15% discount we are giving 15% discount to prompt paying data suppose prompt paying data is equal to x so 15% into x and we have given a discount of 26730 in the current year so that being to these data so these are the data who must have paid promptly that is before the maturity date we must have given them the discount so i can find out the figure of x so prompt paying data will be equal to or x will be equal to 26730 into 100 divided by 15 divided by 50 so that is equal to 178200 so now i can say there were daters who were supposed to pay or total daters are there 198000 who were supposed to pay in the during the year and out of these are prompt paying daters 178200 that mean if there are daters worth 198000 One lakh seventy-eight thousand worth of daters pay promptly. Pay promptly. So I can create a sort of trend. So what is the trend of prompt paying daters? Trend of prompt paying daters. Trend of prompt paying daters. One lakh seventy-eight thousand two hundred worth of daters pay promptly when total daters pay. are supposed to pay if there are 198000 worth of daters who are supposed to pay to us out of those 178200 worth of daters pay to us promptly so if i am going to compute the percentage that percentage will be equal to 90% so now we have created a trend that prompt paying daters who pay early are 90% now you have to look at this way so your closing daters are 22000 your closing daters is equal to 22000 because your closing daters are 22000 now you know that out of these daters what is the possibility of prompt paying daters so out of these daters prompt paying daters as per trend will be equal to 22000 into 90% that is equal to 19800 so if 19800 worth of daters will pay to us much before the what we call their stipulated date then we may have to give them the discount so what will be the discount so provision for discount which you need to create will be equal to this much provision for discount provision for discount will be equal to 15% of 19800 Fifteen percent of nineteen thousand eight hundred. That is equal to two nine seven zero. So two nine seven zero is the amount of provision which you need to create. So now you have found out two nine seven zero, correct? So two nine seven zero. You will write here provision for discount, and now you will find out your profit, and as per your solution, it is thirty five thousand three hundred. so this is interesting question so in this question we had to find the provision for discount in the earlier question which we did question number 3.2 provision for discount was given to us so it has made it more clear so this is all about your list price and catalog catalog price you must have noticed that it's quite a formidable topic interesting one too and quite very very important from the examination point and now when we will move up that when the upcoming session will take wholesale brands this is yet another important topic and quite formidable too so shall meet you in the next session till then it's time to say goodbye